In this recording we're going to look at PHP collections. A collection is an object which resembles a regular PHP array. We can iterate it and we can perform array-like functions on it while still having the object-oriented advantages like encapsulation. So I think you're going to find this one pretty cool. Before we make a start let me just remind you that I record in high resolution so no need for you to watch on a blurry screen. Choose high definition if that will work for you. And would you like to join a growing group of PHP developers and take your skills to a new level? If that sounds like you, all you need to do is subscribe and click the little notification icon and welcome. I'm going to start off with a completely empty folder and I'll create a file where I can go and play around with this stuff which I shall call collections.php. I've pasted in a couple of arrays which I'll use to demonstrate the functionality throughout this recording. One of them, the first one, is a cities array and it has... Uh, other arrays nested within that. The other one is just a single array which represents a city and that's just a single level array. To demonstrate how collections work I don't need to reinvent the wheel and create my own. What I'm going to do is get an existing one. For that I'll come to Packagist and what I'm looking for is this Doctrine doctrine hyphen bundle. For the majority of my demonstrations I'm going to be using a class called Array Collection. So I'll grab Doctrine Bundle there. I'm also going to make sure I get Symphony VAR Dumper. I think it might come with Doctrine Bundle, but I'm just going to make sure I've got it anyway. Okay, that's all installed. I'll add auto-loading at the top of this file. So I'll require vendor autoload.php. And now we can start making collections. We'll new up an array collection and we'll pass in the underlying array through the constructor. So cities collection equals new array collection and then we'll just pass in the cities array. Let's go and have a look at the array collection. As you'll see this implements an interface called collection and it's this collection interface which really designs how our array collection works. These three interfaces which the collection extends are covered in great detail in my PHP course so I'll not go into them in great detail here but I'll leave a link to the course in the description. So let's have a quick look at the array collection class. If you are familiar with interfaces such as iterator and array access then some of these methods will probably look familiar to you. I'm going to look for a method called get iterator and this returns us the iterator which will be used to loop over our collection when we run a for each loop over it. Before we do that let's just dump out the cities collection and see what we're playing with here. So over to the terminal php collections dot php okay so we have an array collection and then we have this elements array and this is a property which gets set when we pass an array into the constructor and it's really as simple as that the first thing i'll demonstrate is our ability to loop over this using for each so for each cities collection as index a city and then i'll just print out the name of the city over to the terminal frankfurt mumbai valencia Let's have a look at some of the more impressive functionality. First of all, filter. What I want to do is filter out anything with a population of less than 800,000. So that means that Frankfurt shouldn't appear in our filtered collection. So this is going to create a new collection and I'll call that filtered cities. And then on the cities collection, I call the filter method. That takes a callback, so function and that will take the element as an argument and then what I want to do here is return any city with a population greater than 800,000 and that means that that city will make it into our filtered cities array collection. We shall dump out our filtered cities and just to be absolutely clear this is a brand new collection which has been uh, created and returned by the filter method. We haven't modified the original cities collection Okay, over to the terminal and we see our new collection with two elements and you'll notice that Frankfurt is not part of the array. I'm not going to show you all the methods but I'll show you the most common ones and the ones which you're most likely to use. So here I'm using the add method to add a new city to the array. As you can see, Lille has been added there. We also have a remove method. This differs slightly because we pass in a key to let it know remove the element at this key so if I say three then it will remove the element which has just been added and we'll dump out 
our filtered cities and we're back to two elements contains this returns a boolean and we're simply asking the question does a collection contain this element i'll pass in leal so i'm expecting the answer to be false because we just removed it let's go to the terminal and check this and the answer is false so just to make sure that this is working correctly what if i went and grabbed an element which i'm expecting to see in the collection i'll paste this in there and i'll just change the name of this variable so it makes sense to contains check this out again and this time the answer is true index of allows you to pass in an element and what it will do is look in the collection and tell you what is the index for that item in the collection so i'll paste in valencia again and then when we dump this out and go and check the terminal we get an index of two no prizes for guessing what the first method does it returns the first item in the collection this is probably one which you might use a lot if you start using collections i've used this quite a lot and so we're just going to dump out the first item from our filtered cities and it is mumbai last same thing as first well it isn't the same thing as first it's the opposite of first instead of getting the first item in the collection you're going to get the last item which in this case is valencia exists so this is pretty cool this lets you know if an item exists in the collection which matches a certain criteria so for this one what i'm going to do is check if there's a city in the collection which has a population that is greater than 15 million so if there is items which have a population or cities which have a population greater than 15 million it's not going to return those what it's going to do is return a billion to just tell us yes there are cities in the collection which match this criteria and as you can see i use a callback function for this one also and i pass the key and the value i'm changing the name of the value variable to city because that makes more sense let's just go and dump this out and see what we get back here i'm expecting a billion of true because of course we have Mumbai, which I said has a population of 20 million. Partition follows a similar format, except what this does is it returns an array containing two new collections. One collection which contains all the items that do match the condition, and another collection which contains all the items which don't match the condition. I'll show you what I mean by that. So we're checking population again, and as you can see here, we now have an array so be careful with that it returns an array and then inside of the array we have the first array collection these are the items which match the condition and the second collection these are the items which have a population lower than 15 million so they don't match the condition two array lets you take a collection object and turn it back into an array so what we're going to do here is take the little collection call two array on it and then we should have an array which represents the city of lil let's go and check this out in the terminal just as we expect there and then i could possibly then take that array and add it to another collection so i'll add this to the cities collection so cities collection add and then i'll add the lil array and then we should have an extra element in there so this covers the first part of the recording hopefully now you've got a good feel for what collections are what you can do with them how they work what i'll do now is crack open a small symphony project and show you how we can handle collections of items returned from a database and here is that database don't worry about all the other stuff we're just looking at the two tables which are book and review and there's a relationship uh, between review and book so one book can have many reviews if you want to code along with this section i'm just going to use a couple of example entities which i found in the api platform documentation and these should be pretty good for demoing what we need to you can get those from the address at the top of the screen this is that book entity it's actually got a lot more properties and things than what we're going to actually need what we're interested in is the relationship so reviews we have one book to many reviews and then if we go and look at the inverse side of the relationship this is a review entity and it has a many to one relationship with book if we look at book you'll notice in the constructor that the reviews property 
automatically gets set to an empty array collection when a book is uh, newed up. Let's add a getter for the reviews and this will return this reviews. But one thing you'll notice here is that instead of an array collection, we're expecting this to return a persistent collection, which I'm not going to go into too much detail about. Think of this like any other collection, except with some extra built-in functionality for handling elements which have persistent state. So some of this stuff might be familiar to you. As you can see here, we've got the Entity Manager interface, and then there are a handful of methods which are custom to persistent collections. But in addition to those, we have all the ones that you'd expect to find, such as first, last, filter, etc, etc. I'm thinking of doing something with filter, so I'll have a look at the review table and see which fields have potential for filtering on. So I've got publication date and rating, which are pretty good candidates. Over back in Symfony, in the source controller folder, I've created a controller called collection demo controller and I've created an index method and a route where I can test this stuff out. I'm going to need an entity manager because I'm grabbing records from the database. So entity manager interface goes in there. My plan is to grab a book from the database and then I'm going to call get reviews. With those reviews, I'm going to do some filtering and I think I'll do filtering by rating. So the way I get book is entity manager find then you pass in the name of the entity, which in our case is book and the ID, and we'll just choose number one. Then I want my reviews, which are related to that book. So reviews equals book get reviews. But I don't want all the reviews. What I want is only the reviews which have a rating of four or above. So I'll create a new collection by filtering the reviews collection. Interesting thing about this is the reviews collection will come back as a persistent collection, but when I filter that persistent collection, I actually get a array collection. So the good reviews will be an array collection. Okay, so reviews, filter, callback, and then what's gonna happen here, it's gonna look at every review in the reviews collection and choose only the ones with a rating which is above three. I'm gonna go over and start up a server using Symfony's built-in server, so Symfony serve. And then in fact, what I think I'll do here, just so you can see the two different types of collection, is I'll dump out reviews and I'll also dump out good reviews and you'll be able to see the difference between the two. Okay, over to the browser, as you can see, reviews is a persistent collection Good reviews is an array collection. So the reviews has 30 items and the good reviews has only 10 items which have a rating of three and above. Let's try another one and actually call first on the reviews and then we should just get a single review and that's exactly what we get. I hope you found this one useful. Give it a thumbs up if so and please don't hesitate to share if you want to help other developers like yourself because that's what good developers do. One last thing, if you want YouTube to show you more of my content, all you need to do is subscribe and click the little notification icon. I release new material every few days. Details on my schedule can be found on the community tab of my YouTube channel homepage. I'll see you in the next one.